Welcome back. I'm Gay Posada. A little touch up on the medications so we can go over what they're used for and uh, the directions. Very important. Everybody calls me up after watching the videos and always wants to know what the uh, dosages are for each medication. So we're just going to go over the dosages, not try not to go into too much detail why, okay? Erythromycin, oxytetracycline, enroflaxin. Those three antibiotics are one gram per 40 gallons of water. You leave it in for three days. You don't add any more, you don't delete any more. Three days. On the fourth day, you do a 30% water change. The process could be repeated a second time. I don't recommend a third time because the antibiotics will eventually destroy your biological. Okay, so we're eradicating something external with those three. The metronidazole, which there's video specifically to, is one gram for every 20 gallons and the, the medication is added daily for 10 days. You can do your water changes prior to putting in the metronidazole or eight hours after, and you do your water changes regularly. Remember, metronidazole deactivates in water, okay? Then we have the metronidazole in the food. People ask me how much, how much. Whatever you can grab with two fingers and put in the food, that's how much. It's a pinch. It's not a specific measurement. We're just going to fold it into the food. We don't want to put too much into it, into the food, because it is bitter and they may not want to eat it. So fold enough that they'll get it in their system and clean out for that preventative, okay? Um, acroflavin neutral, which we use all the time when we move fish around. You can see that they're in here. It relaxes them. It's an antiseptic. So when they do get scratches, that scratch doesn't turn into a secondary bacterial infection and catches fungus. Okay, we do that all the time. It's one gram for 80 gallons of water, and you use one tablespoon of salt for every 40 gallons of water when you're doing this type of medication. How long will it be active? As long as it's green, it's active. Okay, so it's going to take you guys about a month. This particular batch right here, we've been, we put it in, I want to say like six days ago. And you can see that the water's still green, and we do 100% water changes daily. So it's gonna take you a while to get this out. When using acroflavin, please be careful because it will destroy your plants, okay? So if you're gonna use acroflavin, try to use it like in a quarantine tank or something, where it's away from everything. I've been told also that it will wipe out your uh, shrimp. So be careful. We don't have any shrimp here, so you know I, this is word of mouth that I'm hearing. The metronidazole will not affect the plants, will not affect the, uh, the other fish other than clean them out internally. So that one's safe. The oxytetracycline, enroflaxin, and erythromycin are all great. They won't affect anything in the plant stage. They won't affect the tetras. Um, I know for a fact that guys use erythromycin to wipe out that blue-green algae. Um, uh, that's also very good for that. Um, other than that, that's about it on the medications. Um, very simple procedure, but please understand that when you're using medications, please, like I say in the other videos, try to attack the problem with the proper medication. In other words, don't take an exetetracycline for a headache because it's not going to do anything for a headache. So if you've got internal parasites, you don't need acroflavin. You need metronidazole. If you've got wounds on the sides, if you've got scratches, um, if you've got uh, wounds for caused by them whacking into things, the acroflavin will definitely help because it won't let that secondary bacterial infection uh, grow on there. It's like putting triple antibiotic on a wound, okay? It protects the wound from any secondary bacterial infection. The oxy, as you know, is for the external. So oxytetracycline we use when the anaerobic bacteria builds up too much and starts eating the fins on the fish. And, uh, and you can tell right away, like I say in the other videos, they start to look like sunflowers because they're eaten into. Um, that's the only thing that'll pretty much eradicate that uh, in, a, in a heartbeat and let that fish heal on its own where the fins will grow back. Um, sometimes you got two things going at the same time. I like to treat the first, you know, the first things first. Internal first, 
external second. You want that immune system to kick in. You want that food uh, to be digested by the fish, not by the parasites, okay? So you want to start the fish healing on the inside before you can heal it on the outside. Don't mix the treatments. I don't like to mix the treatments because you never know what the chemical reaction might react, okay? You don't want to turn something that's very positive into something that's very negative. Obviously, every single time you medicate, you have to take the carbon out. I am not a firm believer of using carbon in the tank for recycling. I don't believe it. I, it, it's not necessary. Look, common sense will tell you nobody changes the carbon in the Amazon River, okay? It's done by water changes. That's it. You do your water changes, you don't need the carbon. Carbon, in essence, in a recycling tank will dry out their skin. And remember, their skin slime is the front line of defense against bacterial attacks. So if you're taking that away from them right away, they're going to be more susceptible to breaking down. So these are little tidbits that I want to put together for you that I've gathered over the years on medications, treatments, and analyzing what the problem is, okay? It's very important. If you're not sure, ask. It's, it's, it's easier to ask and get it done correctly than it is to do something differently. You know, if you have an internal parasite and you decide to use antibiotics like oxytetracycline or enroflaxin, all you're doing is bringing down the immune system and now the internal parasites are taking over. So you need to be able to attack. I've got clients that tell me that they use magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salt, while they're using the uh, metronidazole. In a way, it makes sense because magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt is like x -lax. So it'll make them defecate more. Well, when you defecate more and you're medicating for internal, it's a good thing to have, okay? Because you're getting rid of the internal quicker. Epsom salts, I don't want you to think that they're regular salt, okay? I know most of you know the difference. Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate, sodium chloride is salt. If you drink a cup of uh, salt, regular salt, with water, it'll taste very salty. If you drink a cup of uh, magnesium sulfate with water, you'll be sitting on the toilet for the whole rest of the week. So one is a laxative and the other one is just plain salt. Epsom salt. I don't believe in baths for discus. I know a lot of people recommend them to put them in a five gallon bucket, mix the Epsom salt, drop the fish in, then get them out. Epsom salt is a laxative. And like, if you've taken a laxative in your lifetime, you know that it may not work the first day, it may not work the second day. So my recommendation to you with Epsom salts is to add one tablespoon, heaping tablespoon, for every 20 gallons of water in the aquarium and leave it in for a week to 10 days until it does its job. A quick bath is not gonna do its job, but leaving it in the water will. Now, if you do a water change, you need to replenish what you took out. Remember, all salts don't leave the water column, okay? So it's gonna be active the whole time. Unless you do a water change, then you're taking some of it out. You need to replenish whatever you took out, okay? So that's my take on Epsom salt for you guys. Most questions are people that don't have their gram scales. We do because we have to do everything professionally. Uh, and not only that, if we overdose, we kill fish. Um, so the number one question for metronidazole is how much metronidazole do I need? It's one gram for 20 gallons. We've spoken about that. But it's real simple if you don't have a gram scale. You take a little teaspoon, okay? And you compact it down, level teaspoon. So one level teaspoon, four grams, that means that you can treat 80 gallons. So if you have a 40 gallon tank, obviously it's a half a teaspoon. My suggestion, buy a little gram scale so that you're accurate, like us. Um, that's for weighing out products. Now remember, not all products weigh the same. Like my physics and chemistry teachers used to tell me back when I was very young, a teaspoon of feathers and a teaspoon of lead don't weigh the same thing. They take up the same volume, but they don't weigh the same thing. So keep that in mind. Not all products weigh the same, but this is when I'm, you know, making science experiments, we're just treating fish. So it's not rocket science. Now, the potassium permanganate happens to be the number two question that I get asked the most. I'm going to make it real simple. If you don't have a sump, if you just got a couple of aquariums, get a bottle of water, if we can zoom in on this, you'll notice that 16.9 fluid ounces, 500 milliliters. 500 milliliters is a half a liter. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna break this one open, dump out a little bit of the water, 
and inside you're going to put 11 grams of potassium permanganate. This is now your stock solution. When you make this stock solution, you store it in a dark place because the light will destroy the formula, okay? But now that you have a stock solution, you get a syringe. And one cc on the syringe is used for every five gallons of water that you're going to treat. So if you're growing out your discus in a 20 gallon tank, you're going to use four cc's because it's one cc for every five gallons, okay? I'm hoping this will save you a lot of time and effort and questions and emails because it's a real simple thing to do. For us, it's simple because we have wet dries in the systems and we just throw it right in the wet dry and it goes through the entire system, okay? Now, will this kill the biological if you dump it directly into your filter? Yes, absolutely, 100%. But by the time it gets to your filter, it's already deactivated. That's why it turns brown. And the idea is to kill all the bacteria that's suspended to save your babies. We're hoping that we brought a lot of light to your uh, questions about the uh, medications. I know I throw them at you extremely fast, but if you have them, keep them, keep them coming. Please keep on bringing those questions because that's what gives us ideas for videos. And once again, I thank you. I'm Gabe Posada. Don't forget to watch us on Instagram, Facebook, and you're already on YouTube. So we look forward to making many more like this in the very near future. Take care, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah.